Hey everybody, this is P from Spin Rack, and today we are talking about the Miss Marvel trailer. Well, the show is coming soon. It's happened. It's actually happening, y'all. <laughs> um, we have this PD here, and we also have Calvin Ellis ready to rock. All right, so let's um, let this one go. Ugh. <laughs> But there's some bits in here that you'll see that we have to go back to. But here we go. How does she convince everyone that she's good? Good is not a thing you are, Kamala. It is a thing you do. I know dressing up as Captain Marvel's yeah. weird. Look at that. Too much time and fancy Terrible life. cosplay. Cool. Is this not easy? That just just a jump. Great, then I'll make Captain Marvel in court. It won't be the first case in the emergency judiciary to hug it out. Yeah, right. Oh. So, what are your thoughts? Uh, mm. Don't hey. hate. Don't hate. All right. Well, based on what they're showing, I don't have a lot of interest in seeing this show. Oh, well, then hate. So it'll get you to say more hate. How was is, how is that hate? You know? No, see, if, if it gets you to say more hate, then you hate. Oh, God. What do you want? The, the, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. She's a girl. She has. She, she gets some artifacts. She gets some powers. There's really nothing there, aside of the fact that this is another Marvel show. And if I'm Marvel file, that I want to see this because I want to be included because this may connect somehow to, to everything else. Aside of that, as a is that a teaser? Yeah, I guess it is. It was the most yeah. recent thing they put out. And, you know, that's a big tease then. <laughs> well, I mean, outside of this, you know, horrible cosplay that she got on. It looks like it's going back to the old school where the front would just be you know, the outfit and the back would be, you know, plastic. But um, this seems like, I mean, this looks better to, I'm so, sorry to compare and contrast, it looks better than She-Hulk. And I have no connection to the character. It looks better than she hulk because they don't have that nasty CGI. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, um, tid tidbit, um, um, Rob Liefeld didn't want to say the nega bands as if there's been the nega bands forever. Like, like ne negate, like anything close to that, like, Lord, come on. But anyway, <laughs> now, I never thought, I never thought it would happen this quickly. I never thought that it would get to the point where Marvel's putting out stuff and I have no interest, none whatsoever. <laughs> Well, it looks like it's in the vein of the CW shows. Outfit just isn't really up to well. I guess she doesn't. Have, this would be the outfit, but this is gonna be. Oh man, this would be if it's if it's in the vein of the CW shows. That's horrible. <sighs> you like some of the shows at some point, right? Not with the worst of it. No, no, I like the CW shows when they were doing superhero stuff, and then they decided, hey, we gotta we gotta start, you know painting by the numbers and you know hitting these demographic uh we got to check these demographic boxes because this is our audience and they just lost it at that point they had a real they had two really good seasons with arrow uh or two real let me say three yeah three seasons that i thought were really solid with the flash and then it just fell off a cliff so quickly so of course i was looking at marvel like hey you guys are able to keep this stuff why can't you guys do this and then if they're following the cw it's like good grief like out of the frying pan into the trash heap 
I'm talking about the best of it. Don't just go to the worst of it and flip Does out. Does this look like the best of it? I'm not saying, I'm saying that this looks like it could be okay. Like this stuff here is okay. There's nothing I'm seeing that's really outside like, of the why, outfit being terrible. Why would you want to watch this show? What have they shown you so far? And again, it's a teaser. But why would you want to watch this show? What have they shown you so far in terms of character or some powers or anything that would make you interested in watching this show? It with powers. That that's better. Wow. Haven't, haven't seen that before. Oh, yeah. Spider-Man. I'm not looking for look at what, something that we haven't seen before. We know that we're going to get that part. I'm not going to just tear apart. This is where I would be like, all right, we're not, you know, we we're not going to do, we're going to keep doing this bad stuff to show that people like, I mean, I think it was in uh, X-Men, they tried to have, a, they came with the dumb idea that when Kitty made her own outfit, it would be just terrible because it's a kid and how a kid thought. It's like, this, we're not, don't put them in trashy outfits. Put them in good outfits. Don't. A lot of kids, a lot of these kids, a lot of these cosplayers are kids and they make great outfits because instead of doing their homework and studying for class, they spend all their time making these outfits. So they can make, I mean, Spider-Man was a kid. He made his own outfit. So th the premise that kids would make really, you know, just like you know, really terrible outfits is doesn't make a lot of sense at the end of the day. They just, it's the same thing with the last one. They have this, it's, it's, they have to take a shot at, you know, it's a cynical shot at being a superhero. You know, it's the shame of, you know, the, of the, the, of the, you know, the costume, the colors, all this other type of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, maybe you guys should be ashamed because this was really supposed to be for kids and not for, you know, not for adults at the end of the day. But they, they always find a way to take some shot at it. They'll have Captain America in his uh, comics, in his comic outfit, make it look terrible. Okay. They have the Scarlet Witch and, and uh, Vision in some of the shoddiest costumes ever. And they continue right here with Kamala Khan as Ms. Marvel and, and whatever that is she was wearing. <laughs> um, there was something else about this that I didn't see in the trailer, but I'm just gonna just quickly scan while we give up the, oh God. Turn off the audio. Let's just put it up. There we go. Let's look at this thing. This feature. Oh, we can get past them. I'm not doing the yeah. zoom. Okay. Yeah, not doing. Not doing the zoom. I'm severe now, so that's normal. Well, I will say that I will point out to you that um, that you know I will agree. Outside of what I said being a kids show, I have seen the, and I'm not. I was. I'm a fan of the original Carol Danvers Ms. Marvel, not the new one, and anything like that is you know. I, but when I saw it at a con with someone that put some time and effort into the costume. I was like, <laughs> and, I, and I took her picture and I was like, oh, you're the person I've been waiting to see this entire con. And she did let me take the picture, but it was better than this one. And this part here, it looks, that put looks a little better than what we've seen in the, in the rest of the shots, but it, it could always be better. But, um, you know. I'm superior now, so that's normal. Another day in the Marvel Universe. Oh, here, there it is. That was it. That was it. In this featurette, they have the other costumes that she had on. The the what's the name? John Romita. I think behind her is the Dave Cockrum one. I'm not sure which one that one is, but it's like I don't sure if there's a past where um Catherine Marvel had these other outfits in the other Decades. High school kid. She's going through all those awkward, cringeworthy moments. Family drama. Boy trouble. School problems. Are you following? Yes, keep going. And also, she's like a huge fan, a huge fan. A big fan. Such a fan. She is a fan of Captain Marvel. Iman Vellani. That girl is Kamala Khan. 
She was our Kamala Khan. How does she know who the head Captain Marvel is? Is that biggest conflict is with herself. Maybe they're right. It's not really the brown girls from Jersey City to save the world. Yeah, haven't heard that before. Focus on your story. You're Kamala Khan. What is this with superheroes and self-doubt? Yeah. Is that like a prerequisite? You get these powers, you go out, and you gotta doubt yourself before you can finally do something? Despite her superpowers, she has a strong heart. Who you look like, the clothes you wear. It's about what you do with what you've been given. I can't even put it into words. I'll pull this. It's it's very. My heart is very full. Does she have a mask in the in the com in the comic books? Yeah, like a domino. And, and the, she's not. She can't. They can't have her wear that in this. Oh, that's what? even too ridiculous for them, huh? No, the, the actors don't want to wear masks. It's not even a full helmet, even though they got her in the wacky helmets and the thing. But you have to put on the outfit and be like, you know, I don't what? know why she's. I don't. I don't know why she's wearing the helmet when nobody ever saw Captain Marvel in that form. It, we the only time she had anything like that was in the first movie, and that was like 20, 30 years before this girl was even born. <laughs> End game. She just had that, you know. In end game, she just had that. Uh, that hair. Um, that that cut. <laughs> you know the. You know the cut. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, I th see like this thing. It looks like it could be fun, but if I hear everything that you're saying. The you know um like some of this stuff looks like it could be fun, but it's the the part part is the costume and the attitude, the tone, wearing the stuff. And then it's like this this is this is the other part of the CW, not the superhero stuff, but the regular shows where your friends, I don't know, he said, look, when you're having a down day, I don't turn and you say, hey, you're Calvin Ellis. You could do whatever you like. <laughs> it's like the cringeworthy moments between friends. I think um, um, Patrice O'Neill was saying that he had a cringeworthy moment as a football player where he was trying to pump up his friends and things that today he said, it's, it's Halloween and we're going to give these, a, they want a treat and we're going to give them a trick. And he's like, oh, that came out the wrong way. Like it's really cringeworthy dialogue here with, the, with among um, platonic friends, which is just like, this should your be friends, fun. Well, your friends tend not to give you good advice. <laughs> Especially at that age, you're like, oh man, what do I do? Your friends tend not to know what the hell to tell you to do outside of the stuff that you are really, uh, the stuff that you guys socialize for. So don't expect good advice from your friends. Your friends will convince you to do stuff like cut class, uh, you know, bomb on a test. You know, I wouldn't take that from this dude. I, this is what I would do, not realizing that you would actually do it. And now you're in trouble. So that's what your friend. That's what your friends are at. But this, again, this rope approach to being a superhero is you you know you're a regular person you get powers you like it for a little bit then you get laden with self-doubt and then somehow you find your true power and then you go off and do some stuff which is at this it's every it's all of them you know so so much for diversity they all have inside they're all the same nobody seems to have any confidence about doing anything <laughs> well i mean the thing is the hard part is trying to capture the fun that was in the first Spider-Man where you had a character who was already a loner before he got the powers and then he was like so much stuff going on whereas most of the humor stuff came from you know him being Spider-Man and the other humor moments came from his supporting cast in school and um and um and, and, and J. Jonah Jameson, Peter Parker really was a, you know, like the Hamlet thing would be inside his head, you know, have his anger moments with his, with these guys where he would lash out and stuff like that. But it really captured, you know, what, you know, kids were kind of going through, the ones that are being the loners and that sort of thing. Whereas these things are like, you know, they have these people with the loner bits, but then they, they turn it into Peter Brady moments. 
Now I'm a fan and I connected with Peter Brady, but they can't everybody can't be Peter Brady where you're having the I'm not I'm not interesting. And it's like, Peter, you're interesting. It's like there's one Peter Brady. <laughs> Come up with another one. You know, there's one Spider Man, that sort of there's thing. There's one Peter Brady. There's one Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing these guys, supposedly, that's what all these writers say they want to do. They want to do character. They say they want to write character. That's the best part of the story, write character. All your characters are the same. But this, that's the thing. When you're looking at Peter Brady, he was the middle kid, and the writing was consistent up until, of course, you know, you're, you get um, they're teenagers, but he was a, a kid, the middle kid struggling with an identity. So he's always going with coming up with personalities. He's like, oh, the, you know, like the same thing with like Jam. They were going through that middle thing. And there's a dynamic with within the family. This is just like, hey, I've been dropped in here and I am a, a brown girl from Jersey City going through what struggle. What? <laughs> it's, it's like either you're, you know, you're an introvert and you're having a hard time making friends or you're trying to do the storylines where you go deal with the, the you know, the the bully sort of thing, which you can do, but then you have to have something, a backbone to this thing outside of just that, which is what Peter Parker had. He already had interest in these girls. He wasn't coming, you know, in the first comic, he's asking the girl out to the science thing when he gets this, you know, so he did have the gumption to try it, even though no one was interested. So it's, and it's a slow process for him where he starts to, but he's still actively trying the same with like, um, like Clark Kent with Lois, like they were both people that were were definitely trying. Where Clark Kent was different, where he would kind of be like, "Oh, here's a here's a you know guys being aggressive. Let me avoid that. <laughs> avoid this and get on Lois's nerves." So you know, um, trying to fortify these characters instead of just going to something where we just like we're checking off every box. We have people behind the scenes that uh, match the, the the race of the character and in front and we'll be dealing with all those issues and we don't have any story to go with it but um we checked yeah. up all the boxes right there right there you nailed it on the head there's no story there's no story peter parker peter parker as much as everybody will give him a lot of credit peter parker is an archetype you know he's he's the everyman so there was a lot of stuff that th- there's a lot of stuff if you understand that that just came to him naturally and it's easy to plug in but not every character is an everyman not every character and not every character is the hero this right over here like who is kamala khan we should get some understanding not of where she lives okay not of her ethnic background but who she is as a person okay at least tease that much to make me interested in this because there's nothing going on that is of any particular interest in that trailer, other than the fact that, hey, it's another Marvel TV show. And I'm just really down on Marvel right now. Well, that's, I mean, what I think the hard part is, and, and what's the name, it was, it was also a fun show, um, having someone like doing like the Ravens, the That's So Raven, where they had a simple dynamic, you know, of, of her powers and all that, but her character, was so fortified of her being boy crazy, you know, you know, like a little bit of stuff between her and her, her friends that would come up, this, that, and the other, the boy that she interested. And it just somehow, this is, you know, I don't know, when, when did I, say? I guess I was in my 30s when I see my sister watching it. And then it's just like, oh, this is something I could just, I could watch too. Like I can connect with this thing at the same time. And it's just like, here, we're just like, I don't know. You could, could you just have her be interesting? There's that. I mean, um, but yeah, ultimately, if they just if they bog it down with all this other stuff, which is the, you know, and then it's like, it's the same thing. Like, it's like people from LA who come to come to New York and they look at Jersey where they got people from Jersey looking at the skyline in New York saying, Oh, I wish I was there. Or people from the Queensbridge projects looking at New York and saying, "Oh, wow!" <laughs> when you you're in the city like all the time, if you're in Jersey, you're in the city all the time when you're in the rope areas of Brooklyn, looking at the New York skyline. Like is that when you get in there, the same 
at the same time, they act like this has been like New York was the, you know, it was the when we were coming from Brooklyn, my father don't <laughs> don't get don't get lost. They're degenerates down there. My brother was like, yeah, generates. Like <laughs> so it's like that that sort of thing. They keep trying to look at people coming from out of town and they like this obviously not New Yorkers. <laughs> And this look at it, like because obviously if it's a New Yorker, it'd be someone trying to throw shade on Jersey rather than <laughs> as a backdrop to Jersey because they'd be like, no, we got you know, yes, we, as we like to call it out here in New York, dirty Jersey. Oh my God! So it's, it's like, but the thing is, is clearly someone out in LA saying, no, you know, this dynamic of seeing the backdrop of all this money being made in New York City. And it's like, well, you know what, that's that skyline, some of these buildings weren't even up there. So you have one and then all these other things over there are, are much later. So it's like all this extra lights came a lot later. So get, get out of here with this nonsense of looking at New York like it is, all those empty buildings with lights on. Like, yeah, all right, y'all, come on. So, but they keep trying to do this half a jersey thing when it's just like um i mean i've experienced coming from new york going to jersey and i've seen you know i've seen like um bringing my friends from brooklyn and bat, you know them battling on the dance floor and you know getting close to violent with, with the two people just quelling it but they were you know my friends and the jersey guys they were going back and forth and it was that but this thing of having this backdrop and having this thing of new york is kind of the I mean, it, it, there's so much of it that is, but the how to write it like that is kind of like, oh yeah, this looming thing of my future, possible future, I'll be, no, you probably get, when you get 18 or you get in your 20s after you finish school, you probably be working in the city. You decide, you know, I want to live on the island and then decide what you hope everyone does. I want to, I need to get off the island so I have kids somewhere. Can't afford to have kids on this island. So That's right. Place of Where am I going to go to have kids? Where can I go to have kids? I know, Dirty Jersey. <laughs> it's the, the circle of life. But, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I mean. Well, there's supposed to be a reason. It's not supposed to be, hey, I'm in New Jersey and I'm just looking out at the skyline like, oh, this, that, and the other, like you want to go. Most people come to New York and there's a reason they want to come. They want to be on Broadway. They want to do music. You know, they want to go to school there. This, what's the reason other than the fact that it looks pretty in the distance? And don't get me wrong. Okay, that skyline for me, that's the most beautiful sight in the world. Okay, <laughs> New York City, baby. But why do you want to be here? Because if you just want to be in New York City to be in New York City, it's going to get really bad very quickly. New York City is tough. Okay, mm -hmm. it is not easy. So the whole idea of this is some, I don't know. It, it, I, I think I'm giving a lot more to this trailer than is actually there. They're, they just decided, look, we're going to... Uh, it's just I just don't feel I just don't feel there's a lot there. I'm 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 open to and I really hope I'm wrong. I really would like to watch something, be surprised and entertained, saying, "Oh, okay." And it does happen. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen very often. So, well, only thing is, in comparison to comic books, it looked like it was um, Plastic Man or um, um, what's the name, or Mr. Fantastic with the big hands. And this seems more like energy rather than her kind of morphing. So that's the only thing I can say in comparison to the comic book where I was just like, I don't know what this thing is, but. Um, I, I read the comic. I had no idea what her powers are. And it was never, well, at least I read the initial, her first run. Mm -hmm. And because so much of it was not about her being a superhero, it was about her personal life and her personal problems. I never really got like, what exactly can you do? Only thing I ever saw her was making a big fist half the damn time. So I, I never I never got much more than that, which is another problem that I had with the character because everybody was telling me how great she was. And I'm reading this and I was like, this is a soap opera. This is an indie comic. When are you going to, there's no heroics in here. There's no real adventure. It's, you know, I said, I understand that they decompress these things for trades, but there's nothing, I said, there's not a lot going on here. I didn't even, I think I had to go back and read it a couple of times. Like, how exactly did she get these abilities? It was just so, the, the, you know, it's, it was ostensibly a superhero story. And then I look at this right here. This looks ostensibly a superhero story. Okay. Because this could easily be, oh, I didn't get powers. Instead of getting powers, I found out that uh, my father made a time machine, you know, something of that nature. And you just throw that MacGuffin in there 
and just keep rolling with it because what it's really going to be about is her personal problems. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I mean, um, it, that, that's definitely what it, this can turn into, but they should be looking at it and saying, if she gets this thing and it's, you know, there's something that's going on in New York or wherever that she needs to go out and fight. That'd be the simple structure in trying to do this. But so many times they try to bog it down and all this other stuff where it kind of would have been cool if, what if she got it? And then you don't know what to do with it for the first thing. And then at some point there's something for her to use this for. And she decides to be the hero or whatnot. But it's like kind of not thinking of who would be cool for this person. No, actually, I don't want to even go there because you got to create some villains for her, but then, you know, Marvel's now just a big sandbox where you, um, people are like, yeah, no, let's have her fight Magneto. And it's just <laughs> like, what? Like, no, oh, yeah, you know, who would be cool for her to fight? And it's like, oh, no, we're going to be swapping villains, huh? Then that's not swapping villains, it's from Marvel. It's like, no, it's, these are X-Men villains. These are, um, what's the name? She... The problem, the other problem when they do this with the original Miss Marvel is the closest thing she got to her own one was going to be Mystique, but then the book died and it turned and Claremont put her into a um, an X in the X Men. So, like if um you these things they don't really kind of come up with their own villains. They kind of just go in the sandbox and say, "Who can?" This is someone that needs some new stuff, and I think. They said the characters that are going to be in this is the the clandestine, and I'm just like, um, for me, I was a fan of those characters, and I don't really want to see them ruined in this thing. So that would be another. I think I've been leaning from going to liking it to being more worried and whatnot, and pointing out all the flaws. So I guess we tried. We're hoping. I'm a superhero. <laughs> anyway. Um, I guess we'll close this one out. Any other last words? Let's just get out of here. Been a wreck. Out.